and I try to, to be sitting uh, uh, down. It's like, uh, it look, looks like uh, something serious is coming. <laughs> it's serious. It's like first would like to be standing, but I guess I will accept it. We can stand up if you And at least I will take liberty to take the talk. Or, or is it? Uh, no, no. Maybe we can speak just. It's okay. You see, I'm just holding it. It's okay with me. So it's no. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, there is one being. That's the reason being that if I do not believe that when one has to shout, I do not believe that one has to shout. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
uh, is one of those many elements which we have in common. It was your mother, it was my grandmother. And she used, she was a fantastic cook, but she used always to taste again and and then let the others taste and say, is it all right like this? My mother did not uh, let others taste. She made all the decisions herself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know if she trusted uh, us. Yeah. Anyway, I, I mean, this, I also grew up in the country. It was maybe not such a remote past that as that in your country, uh, I mean, uh, your people lived like 1,500 years ago and mine lived like 500 years ago. So, but still it was archaic and, and, and um, I mean, I start to point out some things which, uh, because I, it, it came to my mind, it is now 50 years exactly that we know each other. It was. I think 63 at... Uh, yes, yes, 50. We uh, celebrating our... <laughs> yes. Yes, 50th year of meeting. Yes. Almost. It was, it, it was in Knocklezut on the occasion of uh, the experimental film competition and my film, Anulf Reiner, was uh, thrown out even before reaching the competition by the pre-jury, it didn't even reach the jury. And then uh, Le Doux staged a showing outside of the competition. And uh, then uh, when I, I came out... Yes, and it was, I was in the audience, and it was booed, booed and whistled, and... Uh, uh, and uh, people were walking out, so the film ends and uh, 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 walk out, there were other films still running, and I see this guy standing there like he has just sold his house or, or lost his family. <laughs> I knew that must be the filmmaker, that must be he. <laughs> So I came to him and uh, introduced myself and told him how great his film was, and that's how we met. Yeah, and we, I mean, we became friends that day, and we have stayed friends without any falling out for 50 years. And. Um, uh, it's very interesting because our films might not really look very similar. Uh, uh, but uh, the, I, I wanted to point out some things which are in, which came to my mind also look, looking today uh, at your film, which I really love uh, very much. Uh, that. Uh, but one thing we have in common is the discovery of the single frame and the use of the single frames. Um, and uh, then you might say, but it, it doesn't look like a similar discovery, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I, I found out that uh, I discovered the single frame through holding the, the film strip, because I was, I didn't have even a camera, and uh, I, I worked in 35, but I, I, I held the film, I looked through, and, and there was the single frame. And, and Jonas discovered the single frame with the Bolex, mm -hmm. and by this uh, body contact with the Bolex, and there is this motion that invites you to the single frame, and then and uh, I don't know, am I right? Or, um, I, I, I mean, what, what I think his great breakthrough is that he does not use the, the screen as 
as if it were a, an open uh, stage of a theater. You see, how, when you see his films, you see how much redundance in is in filming as if you would open a, a, a theater stage. And uh, this film also is so moving to me because it shows his development from, the, from a position where he's, that we both started out uh, learning or seeing cinema that was practically a, a theater on, on celluloid or reproducible cinema, uh, a, a theater. And his first, these first uh, uh, takes that he shows in this film, and then it comes to this uh, completely different concept of uh, uh, recording an event and creating a space through what I mean with this word glimpse. Glimpses, of course a word that comes from a different kind of, of, of uh, narration. The same <coughs> friend, the, 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 the fact that, that the eye is not a stage, the, the eye uh, is incredibly fast and, and is used also by the brain uh, in a way to uh, hunt for concepts. Not like the ear, the ear always hears and it's always there and the ear, wo ear warns us if something new comes. And then the eye said, look, look, and the eye went and identifies and does not stay there when it has identified. And that comes out in, in, Jonas's, in Jonas's films very much. And then also wonderful is uh, that he does not uh, clean it Clean in the sense, uh, uh, in, in German, uh, the film people say Ausputzen. <laughs> yeah? uh, when, when you have filmed something and in the end then it, it gets lighter or uh, there is a, a little movement, then the, the, the good, perfect editing comes and, <laughs> and cuts it away. Yeah? And uh, there were uh, uh, ancestors of this, uh, in, in of course, mm -hmm. Wertov, who did not uh, cut out the barking dog from his monumental march of the soldiers. And, but in John, Jonas, for me, does, uh, uh, by leaving all this in, yeah, uh, assembles an archaeological sediment, or many sediments, yeah, which are rich when you start to, to read them and to analyze when you get used to it. Uh, my great uh, teacher Friedrich Heer uh, said, uh, weißt du, wir leben in, in, in Schutt der Geschichte. Wir leben im Schutt. Yeah. And, and he, he did not mean that there was some Schutt somewhere. He meant we live within this rubble. We, we, the rubble is we are in the rubble. Everything is shoot the Geschichte. And, and uh, which is a very <coughs> precious shoot. Yeah? And Jonas uh, uh, creates uh, or collects this kind of shoot. Uh, uh, yes, I am an anthropologist uh, recording that as I pass through. I just record it. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. And, <laughs> and also he does it, uh, he has the same concept morality as I have toward the public, which means we do not make a film having a public in mind, which we then try to seduce or entertain. We. Um, I mean, I speak about myself now. I have the seemingly arrogant position that I say I work for myself and I do what I think is good for myself. But the morality is that I do not think that I'm a better person than others. 
So what is good for myself can be good for some of the others. You see, this small, I think we are the same, except one small difference that I don't even think I know if it's good for myself. <laughs> that does not come, that one element does not come in into, and I just have to do it. And it may be very bad for me, <laughs> but I have to do it. I have to, I feel I have to record that. I'm like possessed to do that. So that's the journey. Good or bad, that's I don't know. For me, for me or the others. <laughs> bad for you in, in which sense, in which way? In, uh, in which sense did you mean? Because it was you who used this expression. Well, uh, uh, that you my, my position is very easy too, because I must like it very much. When I see it, it's green, and I like it. Yeah? And I always... And in my okay, so that's... Uh, and in my case, I do not know why I feel. I, uh, it has nothing to do uh, really with liking or not liking. When I feel, want to get to the essence of some moment, and I don't know why I want to get to the essence with my camera of, of that moment, I don't, it's, there is no uh, uh, liking or not liking does not come in into, to, to, uh, into the game at all, in my case. Mm -hmm. No. I, I, I don't it may be somewhere uh, on, on some unconscious level, you know, there are many things that are, that are happening there. Why? I mean, the very reason why I, I film, uh, uh, record that moment and why I want to really to, to, to record it. So there might be, you know, reasons and some very real reasons. Because, let's face it, I live 24 hours. A day, every hour has 20, every 60 minutes, and every minute 60 seconds, but I film only maybe one minute during that day. So there is a reason why that moment, you know, and it's not because I, uh, I just get somehow involved, some, something that you know, I have a need to record it for some irrational reason. For good or bad. Well, um, there is no rational, no rational decisions are being made there on any level, moral or any other. <laughs> I don't want to say And I'm not so sure really you are uh, right about what you are saying about yourself. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, really when you, when you, uh, you think, when you uh, film, when you film uh, any moment in your film, you thought, uh, 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 you did it. Uh, you thought it's good for you or no good for you or uh, you thought what? No, good film. What? I mean, I mean, good. I mean, not good film. That you, you, you. I mean, no, but well, I what don't. What do you mean? No, if we speak about the same part of film, uh, you speak maybe about content, and uh, I speak about form. No, I'm not whatever. talking about the content. I speak about the moment, act of the act. Of filming. Yeah. Well, for me, the act of filming is not so important as it is for you. Uh, for me, the film, the, the more important part started always after I had the film. It started then working on a, f a film which I used to declare a piece made by somebody else. And then I came and started working on it again. Uh, so, uh, 
without thinking it's good for you or no good for you or, well, or good, good for, for you, others. Uh, I want yeah. to like it. I want to have pleasure then when I see this, what I did, you see. Uh, not good in, in any, I mean, it wasn't, my films were never good for I think you are saying me. that, you know, looking back, you know, but I don't think that at the moment when you were handling that film, any of such thoughts came to your head. When I was handling the films or making them, that is, it was always the same, because I stole my <laughs> films in the sense that I accepted commissions. <coughs> and when I lost, when I started to work then on the film, I lost all responsibility and I did things which my, the people who had commissioned me always hated. Or I, I mean, yeah. <coughs> but I did not care anymore. You see, I made I made films uh, like a, a child molester has to do what he does and doesn't care uh, where the, if the police is behind him. And so that happens to me when I sit and make film. Uh, okay, I, now we are closer to my. Should we just uh, continue talking about um, 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 among ourselves, or take, I don't know what the, yeah, we can, we can the expectation we can here, uh, maybe? We I could talk and occasionally ask some, uh, bring some excitement by some questions. Yeah, we can do that. But I, I have okay. one more thing yeah. that I wanted to bring. Because, I mean, in, in a way, I, I want you to be honored here, uh, um, not because of your uh, 90th birthday, because uh, there's no reason. Usually people who are 90 years old are honored because of the fact that they are still alive, but that's <laughs> not, not your problem. <laughs> uh, no, but I, I mean, we are sitting here in the cinema, uh, a black cinema, it's called Invisible Cinema, and it was <coughs> one of those things which I wanted to have all my life. A cinema which is not an imitation of a theater, a cinema which is a machine, like the interior of a camera, just black, where you cannot even know if you are in a space. There should be no space, ideally, and only the screen is there and it's lit only by the light of the screen, etc. You know it, the invisible cinema. And I dreamed of this cinema uh, already, I know for sure, I mean, I had the complete concept in 1958 when I met Schwecherta and I went and I tried to realize this cinema. And I was only laughed about, uh, people said, uh, I mean, I went to the ministry and when we had the film museum already in the 60s and, and the people would say, well, all black, then it makes me sad, I think of, of a graveyard and uh, couldn't the, the walls be at least green or, or whatever. And it was impossible. And, and when I then came to America, and we started to set up anthology film archives. Then Jonas said, we shall have a cinema. And I said, I know how a cinema should be. And he said, uh, tell me. And I told him. And, and he said, well, let's go. Uh, we'll, we'll go and see Jerome, who was his sponsor. And you'll tell him. So we went, and when we went, I, I had these thoughts that I have told the story 30 times to politicians or whatever, why not tell it one more time? Yeah. And then I told it to, to Jerome, and, and he, uh, well, Jonas of course said, this is it. And, and Jerome said, uh, well, Let's meet again in two weeks with uh, the with my people, lawyers and architects, and, and you tell it again. 
And then I thought, oh, now I know that's the usual thing. And we came back. I told the story again. And then they said, okay, we do it. And, and I, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And it was done. And, you see, because it was done there, it could be then done, be done here. Yeah? So, uh, it is again Jonas, who is in a way responsible that this exists here, because had I only tried to do this here, because without having some, uh, it done before in America, would, be, would have been impossible. Only black, no. <laughs> you remember that time? Yes. <laughs> so you owe Jonas <coughs> this theatre. <laughs> It was a great, great, uh, <coughs> great uh, place to see movies. Yeah. Not only the space, black, but also the seats were also specially designed. But, uh, you were not disturbed by neighbors. You couldn't see the <coughs> heads in front of you. You only could see the screen and nothing. You said they want to, to do it again now, no? Yes, there are plans to recreate it. Uh, 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 there is a museum. I, don't, uh, I cannot uh, reveal you which museum in New York at this point, but they are planning to raise, uh, to find a sponsor to recreate that theater, that movie space in visible cinema. Uh, and uh, uh, with one small change that it will be dismantable, you can dismantle and move it to another place that could travel so it could come eventually even to Vienna. <laughs> well, here we have fun. No, 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 Not it won't be identical with this in which we are now. It will be identical what we had there for 72 people and with special seats. Uh, oh, and, uh, yeah. So there will be some differences. And uh, uh, I told you that when you come to New York very soon, they want to meet you and review and have a, you may have some, you know, your, your changes to make, uh, you know, in, in the old edition. Of Okay. <laughs> but you will be involved in it. So okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, next. <laughs> so maybe we, uh, since now we have there are people, there one, uh, we'll take one question at this point uh, from the audience. So, um, you said in an interview about 12 years ago, my film is real life. Art is never an experiment, and I am a farmer. And I was wondering, um, could you elaborate on that, especially? Can you can you repeat what you said? 12 years ago, you said in an interview, my film is real life. Art is never an experiment, and I am a farmer. And could you um, elaborate on the first two points? I'm still not getting it. Film is real life. Art? Okay. My Art film is never an experiment. Life? What, what do you, where did you pick up this quote from an interview? The Obrist. Obrist. Huh? The interview with Obrist. From where? <laughs> Obrist. Hans Ulrich Obrist. 
a prominent interview which yes. uh, was transcribed by somebody and it doesn't sound exactly I wouldn't use I would never say that my film is real life. Uh, uh, it is only you know uh, 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 as an artifact it is part of of course it's it's real and touchable projectable uh, but also it implies uh, something else it's like uh, uh, what is okay it says uh, what's in I can camera can record only what is in front of it. So of course I film only real life. I mean there that is true. Uh, I cannot change because that's what camera does. Uh, it cannot record uh, <laughs> what does not exist. <laughs> Whatever exists is real. So that remains true, I would say. Yes. yes. So what was the other point? Um, art is never an experiment. <coughs> art is never an experiment. Yes, uh, uh, <laughs> those who experiment, uh, they are you know, scientists ex experiment, but uh, when a filmmaker uh, makes a film, when a painter uh, paints, he or she just does it. Good painting or bad, but just does it. It does not <laughs> experiment. I, how would I experiment? You know, the real life is the life. Life is there. I get involved. I want to do it. I'm obsessed, obsessed uh, filming. But there is no experiment in it of any kind. And why? 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 I don't need to experiment. Well, maybe uh, there. This interview. This answer was also in response to the fact that our kind of cinema, whatever you call it, I call it normal cinema, is called experimental by the industry in order to put it down. So I don't like to be called an experimental filmmaker. Um, I, I think it's a schimpfwort. Okay? <laughs> Uh, and uh, and other arts like painting or poetry, uh, nobody dares to call James Joyce an experimental writer, or or, or uh, I mean uh, Picasso an experimental painter. He's a painter, and Joyce was a writer. And we are we make films. The industry makes special films. They experiment sometimes with the audience, <laughs> reactions, they want to hear, see reactions, then they go back and they cut according to the reactions. Uh, uh, industry experiments. <laughs> we do not. Exactly. The, in the industry is the immoral one. <laughs> and be be because they make things which they themselves don't even like, but they know that they can sell it to many millions of people whom they think are more stupid than they <laughs> are themselves. That's, that's, the, that's the principle. So experiment, no. Cross the top. <laughs> <laughs> and that you see, uh, 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 what we have to do here with is, is the primitive level of, of uh, writing of, of, on, about cinema, uh, the, the, the theories, the histories, uh, uh, the terminologies invented. Uh, uh, we do not speak in terms of, about cinema, of different forms of cinema, but we, we speak in terms of how much it costs, or commercial, non-commercial. These are strange, it's a strange way of talking about cinema. Uh, uh, it, it's a, the language uh, is so uh, 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 primitive, uh, primitive way of uh, talking, uh, writing, uh, teaching cinema. Uh, we don't, in, in little, uh, uh, I mean, cinema is not very much different 
in, in the variety of forms from other arts, so like uh, literature, we have narrative, non-narrative, we have lyrical, <coughs> poetry, we have, uh, then we have sonnet, we have haiku, there are different forms. So it's about time that we begin to, to, to talk about cinema also in, in terms of forms of cinema, uh, 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 different forms, and uh, not, not uh, uh, in, <laughs> always with references to <laughs> So it's where it's shown, or how much money it costs to make, or uh, terms like uh, avant-garde, like experimental. Uh, these are all, uh, uh, they have nothing to do really with cinema. Uh, even independent or not independent, commercial, useless terms, because Spielberg is more independent than, than uh, <laughs> <laughs> bread that you have to teach in the university, earn bread and making films just like uh, part time practically. When Spielberg can make anything he wants anytime, but well, he's independent. That is not true. I mean, that it's is quite true. It is he is independent. I mean, he can buy everything he wants in terms of cars, houses. Uh, Wives, whatever, but not, but not, not uh, <coughs> he is is a complete domestic, completely self-domesticated animal who is uh, who does not even know he is a slave of the public taste. I mean, he is a tragic case. Uh, but uh, I'm talking about the <laughs> independence of uh, about the technology. Financially, he might be yeah. independent, but what he, what what he makes is slaveware. It's, uh, it's slave to the to the taste of the stupidest. Yeah. That's what Mr. Mm -hmm. Spielberg is. That's but he does not. Maybe maybe he doesn't know it. You see, he's so domesticated. That Actually, for the first time, that uh, the, the term "independent" in the United States was used <coughs> was when Preminger and a few others got together, split, uh, they created their own company and split from away went from Hollywood and declared uh, uh, that they are independent, independent from Hollywood. And then they were the first independents, you see. But uh, later that term was dropped. They just became part of the of Hollywood again. And then now very often they refer to us as independents. Well, these terms are all. It's it's yes. it's uh, for my I for myself don't ex uh, accept any of these terms. I make normal cinema, and uh, the other, uh, for example, the term filmmaker. This is very interesting. This was this I created for myself already in the fifties uh, because I I saw myself as a craftsman, handmade. I make the films alone and I am a filmmaker, like a shoemaker. And then this became so popular in America in the 70s that Hollywood stole the, the, the bird. And, and I, I remember once hearing a, an interview, I just went by a television, and it was an interview with, with filmmaker, now I forget the name, who, who played in Hitchcock's film, uh, uh, sticking his knife under the shower. What's his Lockett. name? Targets. What? Targets. Charles Lockett. Well, not one of those guys. Anyway, an actor. An actor. An actor. It was an actor, and he called himself, and he was called a filmmaker, yeah? because it became, it became a beautiful. Uh, uh, adornment to become to be a filmmaker for all Hollywood people, and uh, uh, I mean actors are uh, uh, would be better called bricks, like uh, uh, for archi they are the bricks with which an architect builds a house, and a film director builds with using actor maybe have these melodramas, but I mean filmmaker for an actor is I think. Not the right word.
So maybe we will take uh, one. Uh, Here is one. Uh, yes. Um, a question to Jonas. Um, what do you think about intuition? Does it? Um, is that? The question what is what do I think about intuition? Yes. I, I, I have never thought much about it, and uh, it's a subject. He's a farmer. Uh, subject <laughs> that uh, I, I, I don't Farmers think. Do uh, uh, I'm not very psychologically minded person. I, I, I'm, I know that there is, and that there are books, and, and there is such a thing, and discussed by many. I cannot. Uh, 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 it's not the subject that I. Uh, I try to talk about but it, it, if one doesn't know the subject then it would be you know just waste of your time trying me to figure out what intuition is you know and how how it comes in what I do or it's useless kind of waste of time okay. um, yeah hi you said you're going to reconstruct the movie theater that you once had. But what, what happened to the original movie theater? The original theater is the anthology after our sponsor died and our lease on this space uh, uh, expired. We had to move out, which we did, and we had to leave everything that was there because we could not move out. Everything was designed for that specific space and you had to uh, including the seats you uh, to move them out you had to to cut them to pieces and destroy uh, it, it just uh, it was a space uh, specifically designed made for that space everything uh, but so same it's as you know whatever is made in these spaces uh, made for this space here. But so it's completely gone from the East Village? The, the no, we live in the so-called uh, Soho area where, yes, yeah. where one could, uh, at that point when we had to move out in 74, anthology opened in late 1970. In 74 we had to move out and it was uh, this Soho so area there uh, created by, was being developed by George Machunas of the Fluxus uh, uh, movement and it was very you could buy get one whole huge floor for uh, at that point was like for eight thousand dollars which now would be eight million so so we moved out to stop. But the theater was in the former Aston Esther library if you know the place. An Aston Place. Yeah, Aston Place. Aston Place. Oh, at Aston right. Place, at the Aston Library. But but the anthology they present was always in, in the East Village on second 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 street. Mm -hmm. like, um, second this Avenue. microphone does not read. No, sorry, but wasn't it always on Second Street or Second Avenue? That that's where it is. That's, that's where it is, where is where now. It still is. Now, because uh, at some point even the Soho Place became too small for us. The library was growing, the film collection was growing. It was just too, too small a space. So we, at that point, in um, 60, 78, we bought from the city in an auction a, 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 a former prison, courthouse and prison which uh, a Viennese architect, a good friend, Raymond Abraham, redesigned, remade it under his supervision. And it took us 10 years because we had to raise, uh, to raise a lot of money. It took me 10 years to build it the spaces, the theater spaces, the film walls, uh, and that's where we are now, on the second corner of second and second in Manhattan. And it's really, we call it, it's our cathedral for cinema.
but it's also it's uh, it's taking time as some cathedrals in the past taking time to really complete it we still have to complete it raymond also made designs for the library of our paper materials next to it that we have space and before he died he designed killer plans designed for the library building and that is my job during next two three years i want to do it it won't be easy but Good luck. we'll do it <laughs> Uh, I, I would like to ask the next question. Um, I'm quite sad at the moment, so I wanted to ask um, whether you ever had a time in your life where you could not work, where you could not film, not do what you had to do or love to do? Uh, I don't know if everybody heard the question, if I ever had time to do I guess what I really wanted to do, but I did not have time to do. No, not not <laughs> not you did not have time, but you couldn't for I don't know. Whatever. Okay, I couldn't build the library. I have been trying to build that library for already 30 years, mm -hmm. but now I'm closer. I think I'm a little closer. Maybe so I say three maybe years. Uh, that has been my biggest challenge actually for the last 30 years. Uh, uh, to, to, to find somebody with ten million dollars to, to build that uh, actually began with six now it came from now it has grown to the twelve to, to, to build that library because our paper materials are not accessible to researchers scholars they are in boxes 50 years 60 70 80 of film history sitting in those boxes the book it has to be built, and we will build it. We will build it. Uh, so, but as far as what I do, of course I do only what I like to do, and what nobody else is doing. I never do what somebody else is doing. Why do it if somebody else is doing? Uh, I do only, I mean, why we started ontology film archives? Because it had to be done. These films have to be preserved, have to be shown, and, and shown in the right way. And that's also, you know, why I started Film Culture Magazine, why I started writing for The Village Voice, from necessity. And there is no necessity. Why do it? Just to have a drink, to <laughs> have a good evening with friends, so do it. <laughs> Sorry, the way I, I understood the question was, you seem to have been creative uh, all your life, but were there moments when you were like I, I, sad? I keep your mic turned away from your mouth. Sorry. Uh, the, the way I, I understood the question was, um, uh, you, you seem to have been creative, uh, so creative, all through these six decades. Um, I hate creativity. Okay, sorry, but, but <laughs> were, were, were there moments? I, I, creativity is, is, is a fad that is ruining everything that I like. My vision, what I walk the streets, that's creative, with that schools that promote creativity are ruining my visual world. I would ban all the designers to some distant island and surround the island with crocodiles and beasts that would never escape. Sorry. But of course, you resisted the temptations of creativity. Who cares about creativity? Okay, you stay for yourself. But were there moments when you were like saddened or, or kept from being, you know, uh, able to produce films because you were just saddened? I don't go, okay, produce, I mean, you yeah. know, I just make things. I'm a maker, like a farmer, you know, yeah. makes, produce, uh, for the word produce already for me. It <laughs> smacks of commerce, commerce. <laughs> but continue, please. 
I'm just trying to translate the question uh, uh, that we just heard. And I, I, I wondered if there was a moment when, you know, a personal crisis, for example, I have crisis, personal crisis every day, practically. I know. <laughs> with, with you have no crisis, uh, 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 just go away. With your ability to, to work uh, with your bullets. Any child can work with the bullets. You don't need special yeah, abilities. So That's a beautiful talent. Yeah, I know. So, uh, there was not a moment uh, when uh, you uh, lost the ability to... Uh, what do you mean I lost the ability? There was a moment when I lost the ability. <laughs> there was a moment when, when the person... Do, uh, uh, do you hear what this gentleman is saying? There? Yes. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a very personal question, but if you don't want to answer it, it's okay. I'm just trying to... I was just trying to translate the question that we just heard into something that, uh, I mean, what we talk about. Was there any time you did not work? You did not fail <laughs> I, I, the I, 60 years? Working is a modern invention. Uh, I did not grow up when I grew, what, was in the farm. We did what had to be done in the spring. You do certain things and this summer comes you do something else. You know, you feed the cattle, you, it has to be done. We, we did what had to be done. We were not workers. So, when you said, you talk about uh, <laughs> watching, uh, I don't know, I mean, uh, how to answer this question. But I do think so, when I feel my... I, you know, I did many things, and I do, I'm, I'm making and doing many things, but I, I don't feel like I'm working. I'm not working. But you were filming the last 60 years, uh, huh? you were filming the last 60 years through. Oh yeah, filming, yes, I, I do, that's every, one of the things year, I do. Like, like every week there was no, you never stopped filming like for a half a year, a year? Oh no, I film only like one minute at, uh, during that, at any given 24 hours or, or sometimes uh, in one week I only film maybe one minute. Or, or something. I don't film all that time. No, no, but there was no decade like a year you stopped filming. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I, no, no, you, if, uh, you, if uh, uh, there is, I think, such an expression as Sunday painter or something, Sunday <laughs> artist, who works on the Sundays or something, and you think that those who, that uh, poor were, uh, our poets, our musicians, our, uh, our painters, they, 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 they paint and then they, they think, uh, no, no, maybe I'll wait now a year, maybe, or, uh, or, 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 or I mean, uh, okay, well, Greeks knew that uh, once the muse enters you, you have no choice. If you don't do what the news tells you to do, you will go crazy and they will have to lock you up. So, uh, and they knew that there are, you know, those seven different muses, you know, maybe there are more. And they, they at some point, uh, <laughs> uh, cho cho they make their own choices whom they decide to enter. They make, uh, they evaluate somehow. They have their own system. And then uh, <laughs> you are you have no choice. Um, you do not work anymore with the bow legs now. <laughs> uh, no, the, uh, uh, I switched from bow legs to other tools of making moving images uh, uh, when. I could not find uh, certain stocks, to, film stocks to which I was used and it was like automatic. I knew completely was in control. My fingers were in control of exposure. So. And then suddenly those stocks began disappearing uh, around uh, 85, 
and that by 89, I really uh, 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 was ready. And, uh, and there was another reason, like, uh, I began, like, I felt repeating myself, like, uh, uh, like time had come to look at uh, reality from, like, maybe a different angle. I, uh, so when video came my way, I said, why not to try, see what, what this is all about. Uh, that, so it's uh, how it came to be. the change. And now you went from video to digital. Yes, uh, because uh, now uh, I was a victim uh, of commerce. Uh, 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 in 89, because the change came not because there some artists, filmmakers decided that now it's time to change to, to video or to eliminate certain stocks. It's the industry decided that it does not, they don't make enough money now with that and they can make more money with that. So they began eliminating and later uh, in video, then again, they, 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 they decided that uh, they can make more money by changing the systems, the formats, every three years or four years, and forcing you to, 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 to buy the new equipment because you cannot look at what you have, uh, what you taped like uh, five, six years ago, or you cannot edit it. it. The technology is gone. You can find, find and buy some used equipment somewhere, but that will be gone also. So uh, now, uh, in a sense, I'm a uh, victim of, uh, of, I was and, and still am, victim of, of, uh, of commerce, the, those who make the technologies of making moving images. But as I know, you, you don't like to be a victim. I have no, in, in this case, uh, Okay, maybe the use of work here, maybe it's, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe it's correct, maybe not. But I have no choice, you see. I don't make those choices, we don't make those choices. Somebody who has, and wants, has money and wants to make more money uh, makes those choices. But I have to also say that it's more complicated than that. I think that uh, uh, the coming of video and digital and, and it's continuing that uh, is not invention of somebody just sitting there somewhere and thinking, now oh, I should invent something, they have film, yes, but something else I should invent. No, I think that it comes from some necessity as we, we move ahead as a human you know, race race, humanity, and, uh, uh, and we, uh, uh, from as everything is changing, technologies, they develop like they, there is a need almost in us, in us of new tools to express like the, those new feelings, new ideas, new thoughts that are coming already to us, growing in us, and only the new uh, changing technologies can record it. Uh, you cannot record certain things. It was okay in uh, 1990. It was okay in, in until 2000, uh, maybe even now here and there. But no, we need new. Uh, I think humanity had a need and is developing the new equipment, digital, and all that is coming from that need doesn't come from nowhere. There is a need. necessity. And so can, can, can you compare, I mean, when you look back to the films like uh, those who made with the Bolex, and now you have already many years working uh, with, uh, with these other media, do you, can you say something about the difference in, in making and in what, what comes out? And every tool, every different tool of making images, uh, be, be it in, uh, you know, if, if, uh, if you are a painter, uh, I mean, uh, 
with water colors you do one thing, with oils you do another thing, with uh, pencils and pens and inks, still another, uh, every new tool of making motion picture images comes with its, with its own uh, content, its own forms, uh, uh, practices of, uh, 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 therefore, the video, uh, the digital, uh, and also dissemination, uh, uh, everything changes drastically. Uh, uh, what I do with video, <laughs> I mean, with video allows, of course, to, 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 to uh, record completely different aspects of uh, reality than, than the, um, um, than the <coughs> poems. Uh, I can stay longer in certain situations and well, uh, still the same challenge of the right moment and the intensity of the moment is there. <laughs> you have to be, but what I'm recording is, is something else. It's something else, not when you, <laughs> let's say, see the sleepless night stories, or it's not the same as what you see in Walden. Uh, so it's a different content. Medium. Yeah, that's a different medium. You uh, tools, tools, tools. The medium, uh, it's still motion. Uh, pictures, but within motion pictures, there are different tools of making motion, moving images. Same as in painting, art, uh, you have like 20 different choices. Yeah. Um, so now we have uh, also like 20, but the only thing is that in painting you still have inks and, and uh, watercolors, but in, <laughs> in yeah. motion pictures, you don't have, or they, they, you don't use difficult to go back. You just have what's now. So, well, we agree <laughs> on that point, and I want yeah. just to to repeat the, the sense. So, in that sense, I'm a victim, you see, to the circumstances in my time, that I have no choice. I'm not, I'm not giving a choice. See? Yeah, that with a different tool comes different content. Yes, absolutely yeah. so. Yes. This is also my opinion. You cannot do with oils what you can do with watercolors. Yeah. You cannot do with 35 millimeter camera what you can do with 8 millimeter camera. And reverse is true. So. And of course, it's criminal when they, they make something on video and they try to transfer it and show it on film. It's, it's absurd. Or when they 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 they, trans they make you see films on video as information. It's okay, but uh, to to uh, <laughs> to once for my friends, I projected Kenneth Anger's film Pew's moment side by side, the film and the video. Uh, if any of you ever can do that, do that, <laughs> and you will real, you, then you will understand the difference between film projected as a film, and not on a wall, but on a screen made specially to project films. It's screen, it's special surface that we have in cinema. Very often today, films are projected just on walls. That you, you know, you love cinema and you're going to project it and more. That's not the same. And then, as a video, and you will see the difference. And you will grab your head, and you will... Well, uh, if this would happen to the directors of the all the film museums, which are working now all over the world, 80% of the directors of the film museums would not see a difference. They think it's the same. Mm. And this is a tragic situation. I mean, I'm not <laughs> referring to our director here. <laughs> but uh, but uh, there is a minority of it. It is a tragic situation internationally. Not minority, majority of the museum. 
Yeah, the majority do not, does not understand that uh, there is this difference. And they think it's a smooth succession from one to the other. And if this understanding does not come soon, it will result in the loss of uh, film history, in the loss of uh, memory, human memory of humanity, because film will be gone. It's like it's like uh, uh, if you take painting, uh, painting or a a beautiful print which has the same size, and if you would throw the paintings away and say we have now this is much more practical, cheaper, everybody can have it at home, can buy it. So wh why could preserve the painting? It's so expensive. And so. The same thing happens now with film, and and it's a very very tragic and dangerous situation. This is why I wanted to ask you also, uh, I mean, I know you don't want to verbalize about your films, but uh, when, you, when you look at the newer films which you made with, with digital, what is the good things, what is the bad things, can you say something about that? Uh, it cannot be compared because uh, uh, I'm now, if I would remain, have remained what I was myself in, uh, let's say, 1965, if I would be still the same person today, then it would be very tragic uh, for me <laughs> to remain. But I moved as a person myself, what I am, somewhere else, and I did what I did, and I did many things, I'm doing many things now, but I'm somewhere else. So what I do now, it cannot be, com and I'm using a different technology, and I'm doing, comp uh, in, uh, like my interests have uh, shifted a little bit uh, as an anthropologist, uh, I became maybe more anthropologist than I was, uh, 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 what I'm filming, that it, it, it cannot be discussed in the terms like uh, compared to what's good or bad, I th it, because it's a com I'm dealing with a different content uh, and different uh, tools. Uh, so I cannot really, ver I cannot verbalize yes. uh, uh, that. No. Well, it, of course, it takes it, it. always takes some time until one uh, really understands the specifics of a certain historic period. I will just interrupt. That one thing that when I had my borax, uh, it took me, which I uh, my first borax I bought late '49, and only around maybe '59 uh, I I felt like I'm become like. A, it follows my finger, it follows that I really, maybe uh, closer to, let's say, jazz musician, when I don't have to think that much, that my, when I go inside, in, indoor, is my exposure is set on, on that, that spot, spot, and automatically I go outside, fingers adjust the exposure, like everything becomes automatic, like uh, for a musician. Uh, so I thought the same will be, in video will be easy. No, I have to tell you that it took me also about 10 years. Only around, uh, like I began, went, uh, got my first Sony in 89, but only around uh, 2003, somewhere there I felt, when I made a letter from, a letter from Greenpoint, that where I felt that now, I think I can do with my Bolex what I want, uh, with my Sony what I want, that, that without much thinking, just like extension, <coughs> became extension of me. Like so, it's uh, not so. Still uh, takes time. Sorry, I interrupted yeah, no, you, but right. I thought I should. No, I, 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 what I wanted to point out that the the Bolex films have have a certain very recognizable form and and 
what is interesting is that Jonas uh, was known as always having this big bag, a big bag in his hands and uh, carrying it with him and, and then uh, uh, working, because bo working with Bolex, Bolex is much heavier than the equipment you have, you have today. And uh, so uh, everything is, is more, all, every movement is more difficult. Every, also the light, uh, working with light is more difficult. So uh, it is a completely different uh, work that comes out of, of that uh, tool. This is what, what I wanted to uh, maybe what I wa where I wanted to hear something from him as, as in comparison with the newer tools. But, but it takes some time for oneself, of course, to really be able to verbalize that. <coughs> yes? Um, oh, yeah, no, I would like to go to somebody else. Okay. <laughs> you <have your> time. <laughs> sure. uh, for variety's sake, I would like to jump. Sorry. Go. Um, in the past, you supported a lot of young um, filmmakers. And my question is uh, to both of you, how do you see the the film scene or young filmmakers right now. So is there something like an underground somewhere in Europe, is it America or in America? Do you mean those who make films or, or yes. those who use uh, video cameras and no. other digital system for camera, like for, for, for uh, <coughs> I mean telephones, filmmakers. More, you, do you mean those who make moving images or do you actually mean literally film as a celluloid? Uh -huh, okay, no, no, no. Or I you mean, don't mean that? No, no, I mean film in general. Ah, your mo motion, moving images in general. Yes. So, uh, uh, difficult for me to say anything about it because, uh, <clears throat> okay, so now this will be maybe an experiment. <laughs> How many of you in this audience now, have something in your pockets, a little tool, be telephone or anything that you can make moving images. I would like to know how many of you could you lift your hands? So I could say, as uh, politicians do, uh, unanimous, <laughs> unanimous. In other words, everybody today makes moving images with one kind of tool or other. So it's almost uh, very close to like uh, having a pen and uh, writing. Everybody has pens, pencils. Uh, and of course, that's not a big deal. Uh, uh, no, uh, I will tell you an anecdote. Like in the 60s in America, uh, uh, there was this like explosion uh, in uh, eight millimeter cameras, uh, A16. Uh, 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 actually, the statistics indicated that there were about six million cameras in the United States around 1965. So, uh, uh, I was visiting uh, Pasolini in Rome, in his home, and we had a conversation uh, but that was in 66, about uh, young people of America and what's happening, all the changes. And I was very optimistic, so there are many changes and just one indication is to look at it like with the cameras, everybody is just filming, uh, nothing can be hidden, uh, everything will be revealed, you know, uh, because uh, we are covering the world with our cameras. And Pozzolini said, yeah, but uh, do you know how many typewriters there are in the world? <laughs> Did uh, and that produce any revolution? Uh, uh, 
and then I have to admit that uh, it doesn't matter how many cameras or pencils or typewriters you have, uh, uh, that won't uh, produce anything either. You know, it's zero. It's, uh, it's like anything else. You can be, uh, it's like um, how many good restaurants do you have? <laughs> it's a messy thing. Uh, so, young people, of course, everybody is making images, and I, 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 there is no way of knowing uh, uh, what will survive. Uh, will, it will survive what people will share and will want to preserve uh, for others to see later or exchange and will permit everything else to disappear, disappear. And you never know what that natural Darwin, Darwin kind of selection uh, will uh, 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 make to uh, uh, survive so that in 100 years we'll pick up and uh, said, oh, this is what they made in 2013 in Vienna. You see, but uh, we don't know what that will be. <laughs> it may not be Peter Kubelka, but it may be just... Uh, but I think it will be Peter, because uh, according to what we know, the film uh, Celluloid will, uh, uh, under even our current uh, available conditions will survive uh, maybe 150 years or so. More. And, uh, and then it can be trans... Uh, uh, new print, if original is there, new print because there will be UNESCO or uh, Ministries of Cultural, uh, Culture will establish, create factories to produce new equipment put and the film sell the materials to make prints, they will be made, they will exist, and therefore your films will survive. Why while uh, <laughs> the video digital materials crumbling within uh, two, three, four, seven years. And, uh, Namjoon Pike used to laugh at us in the sixties. And I said, ah, you filmmakers. <coughs> and now, oh, videotapes of the video art of the 70s sitting in, you know, the anthology. We have them on the shelf. We have great, great difficulties of locating what the equipment to really to transfer them to the formats that uh, they could be seen. And of course, money is not involved. Not only the equipment. And our films are still there. Mm -hmm. Well, since the question was also addressed to me, uh, Jonas is much more a humanist than I was or I am. Uh, he helped people a lot. I helped films. Uh, for me, it was important to... I only started promoting something if I had seen a film. Uh, not, not so much the people, but the films. That, that is my, was my aim. And today, Jonas has answered lots, uh, a lot of what I have to say. Uh, it's impossible to see everything. Uh, when I was in the film museum, <coughs> I tried to see everything. But today, it's, it's, uh, it's a thing of, it's an impossibility. And also, what will happen, of course, this fact will and is already influencing the content of, of what is made. You have, uh, uh, f for example, this, we didn't mention Facebook or, or, or this media, uh, where uh, uh, also details come to life which had never been mentioned before with the more complicated media. Now ev every every little fart can be uh, documented and put in the internet. But, but uh, I think that this will be a great motivation for many people to return to the ancient media, like drawing, painting, sculpting, and filming. If you want uh, a more uh, stable and a more and a materially closer work to your body. 
because film is still a medium where you can uh, have body contact. Yeah. With the digital uh, medium, this is gone. So I, I'm not at all against the digital medium, but it is a, a, a completely different thing. And, uh, and uh, I mean, I encourage people to continue to work on film. Uh, as you know, I, I bet my whole work on the fact that I believe that film will survive. I have, my films are not uh, copied on the digital medium. And it's very hard for me because many people cannot see my work anymore. But I am convinced uh, that film will survive this valley of death <laughs> in which we are now. <laughs> may, I, may I say something that, that I was uh, reminded of when you spoke about uh, not knowing what the Vienna of 2013, what will remain of it or which, which elements will remain of it. And I had to think of the, as an Austrian, of the end of reminiscences that we just saw. <laughs> and I'm sure that even today the personnel of the, of the monastery in Kremsmünster or the city council of Vienna is aware of the fact that maybe the most beautiful or one of the most beautiful art works or art documents of their places, of the Naschmarkt as it burns down, of the Kremsmünster library and, and the whole convent, that in your work these very different uh, traces of cultural life or social life in, in the history of Austria have been preserved, have been transformed, and that, is, that it is these glimpses by Jonas Makers of Klems Münster and of the Naschmark as it burns that will probably remain and be among the very few and most essential documents of, Aus of Austria in the 20th century. Uh, I, I'm saying this not as a question but to because I became aware of it again when I sat in the front and saw the last five minutes of the film. And as, as, as it was unknowable then in 1971, I think that these acts that you performed with the Bolex camera would lead to this trace. I think it is equally hard or impossible to, to say so now, like, like you just confirmed. Uh, what will be the documents of this moment in time. But it's very heartening seeing this film, which is 42 years old, that something like that, I mean, I'm, I'm, in that sense, I might also, may also be a humanist, but something like that will also hopefully survive from, from Vienna or from this place and, or any place in 2013. If, if that utopia that this film gives us about preservation about something surviving, then I, I think it's what one can be hopeful. You have the last word. <laughs> That's, thank you for your presence and great that we are here together. Thank you. Thank you.